All right, hello everyone, and peace of the Lord to all of you. I hope my voice came in good and clear. Please invite your friends, and today our topic, as you see, it's about the, you know, the same God we worship. Is it he the same as the God of the Muslims? And, uh, you know, starting today with the name. Uh, is it the same name? Is it a different name? Uh, you know, you notice uh, from the beginning, that Muhammad and they are so desperate to say that we worship the same God. But those are the same people, they reject Jesus to be God. So how in the world you say we believe in the same God, and then you don't believe in Jesus? So from the beginning, the idea is collapsing. Because if you believe in the same God of the Christians, then you should believe that Jesus is God. Otherwise, if you don't believe in him, then we don't have the same same God. It's it's uh, obvious. We do not even need to talk about it. So the first question, if a Muhammad and he tried to say to you, we worship the same God, we'll say to him, do you worship Jesus? You say, no. So, okay, well, we don't worship the same God. Thank you very much. So the story is over from the beginning. However, we will give a different approach. Uh, we know that our God is a spirit. If you ask any Muhammadan, don't ask the ignorant, those you know, dummies who do not know the religion, uh, the one who have little knowledge, is your God is a spirit? They will say, no, that's it, we don't have the same God. So their God is not a spirit, our God is a spirit, which means we have even a huge difference in nature. And if their God is not a spirit, so what he is? Is he an idol? Maybe. Is he a rock? Maybe. If your God has no spirit, that means he have no power of life because the spirit present the power of life. All life is coming from the spirit of God. Who gave a spirit to every one of us? God. And where the spirit come from? From the spirit of God. So all the source of life, which is a soul and spirit, is coming from God. Muslims, their God have no spirit. This is why he cannot be the creator, because the creator has to be the one who gave the source of the spirit. The Quran says that Allah, he breathed into Adam his spirit. And in the verse in the Quran, it says our spirit. But the second you ask Muslims, so do Allah have a spirit? They say no. Do Allah breathe? They say no. But why it says they are breathed? into Adam, his spirit. Muhammadan is a religion which is copied from a mix of religions. So now they are in trouble. They don't know what to say. In one hand, they deny that their God he breathed. That is a problem for them. For us, it's not a problem. For them, it's a problem to say that God, he blow a spirit. But for us, it's not a problem. Why it is for them a problem? Because simply, everything they have is a theft and they are so confused about what it's meant. But today we will start with the claim, like we saw Abdul and I made a video about him a few hours ago. I don't know how many of you watch it. Uh, and this is the title of the video. You can go and watch it. Uh, people don't like short videos. You know, I don't know why. Uh, and uh, I noticed that if a Muslim he make a short video, uh, Muslims share the videos. Christians, they don't care. Uh, but anyway, uh, there is a few warriors. The Muslim they swarm to support a Muslim, uh, and not because, by the way, because they love Islam. No, because they they feel so desperate. They feel they are under attack. They feel that they are they are demolished. Here we, you know, this guy he was saying that uh, you asked me about Allah, okay, go to first book of Genesis, and then you will find that the first book of Genesis in Arabic mentioned the word Allah. But as we know that the book of Genesis in Arabic have nothing to do with the book of Genesis. Why? Because it is a translation. If, if the translation is wrong or false, well, it's a false translation. We can go to the book of Genesis and see what the word in Hebrew, because this is what the word is. 
And then if the word there is Allah, then we can say, oh, he's right. So this is the book of Genesis. And here we show you words by words. And any one of you can go check it out. Hebrew and English. As it is. So any translation does not fit with what is the original. All of us, we agree. It's a false translation. Do we agree? Any translation does not fit with the original then it is a false translation doesn't matter and by the way the arabic translation they have the most popular uh, copy of arabic translation of the bible is translated by two people who they are one a christian and one as a muslim so imagine uh, uh, so here you will see this is the genesis and the word we are talking about the man who claimed that it is allah he said in arabic it says allah it is Elohim. Do you see it? Let me zoom in so you can see it better. And here all the idea of Allah is demolished. Why? Because Allah is a singular name. This is number one. Elohim is not a singular name. If you translate the word correctly, that will be God's. It's a plural name. So it is Elohim. And here you notice that even that word is not even a name. Elohim is not a name. It's not. It's a word present God. But here, this word, the very first word in the Bible present a trinity. That's why it's a plural name. It's not a single word. It's not God. It's God. So Elohim is the one who created the earth and the heaven. Now, we, where we can find Elohim in the book of Muhammad? None. Zero. If we ask Muhammad, then, is Allah a name or it is a word meaning God? Every one of you of them will give you a definition because this is very stupid religion. They don't even know what the word Allah means. Not even a single one of them knows. And they start guessing, you know. Each one of them, he says to you something different, you know. One, he say the word Allah came from wala. What wala mean? Will you leave your mom, you start crying, you miss it, you know, etc. The other one, he says to you, uh, uh, Allah is coming from the word ilah. But that means Allah is not a name. If, uh, if ilah is the Allah, that means it's just a word mean God. And then your shahada is false. If you go to the Muslims, uh, if we go to the Quran, you know, we will find that Muhammad, he created a shahada, which is a witness in support he will convert to Islam. It's a fiction. It's against even the teaching of Islam. In the Quran, you will not find Allah mentioning his name next to the name of Muhammad. But you will find this. If you go to chapter 3, verse number 18, and I will put it for you in English. Here you will see, it says that there is no God but He. Okay, what the word there, God? Ilah. Ilah. il -eh. Okay. And this is coming from the Aramaic. There is no God except He. Who is He? That is the witness of Allah. So Allah is a name of a person. Allah is not a word, mean God no more. I know that, you know, uh, Muslim, they will say, you when you say Allah, you mean God. I understand. But it's a name of a person. So when I say Jesus, I'm talking about God too. For the Christian, Jesus is God. So I can say Jesus or I can say God. It's the same. For if we say God, we mean Jesus. If we, Jesus, if we say Jesus, we mean God. But, but here, you will notice that it says it clearly that Allah he witness and the angels so Allah is a person not God he witness you will notice that the first one says there is no God so why the Muslim don't say there is no Allah but he if the word Allah mean God so can we replace this with Elohim no why because even this one is singular it says Ilah Elohim is not a singular. So they don't have Elohim. 
They don't have uh, 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 any other name except this name. And then there's 99 names, by the way, for Allah, supposedly. And they are obviously stupid names. Uh, they can cause a trouble more than a benefit for Allah. As an example, you know, uh, starting from the first one to the last one, uh, but one of them is uh, the hater or the one who spread hate. Uh, the one he is the revenger or revenge. Uh, the one who is uh, the uh, uh, who cause forget forgetting. The one, uh, I mean, all kind of stupid st stuff, which does not make any sense because Muslims they say nothing like Allah, and then they come, you know, the, all the attribute of Allah they are attribute of a man. There is only few attribute is not attribute of a man. He took them from Jesus. As an example, the Quran says Allah is the truth. Well, Jesus says that a few hundred years before. He said, I am the truth. Jesus says, I am the life. Jesus says, I am the resurrection. Quran says, Allah the resurrector. So there is some attribute been taken from the description of Jesus and Muhammad, he attached them to his God. But that will not give their God similarity to our God for a very simple reason. Their God cannot be alive. There is no proof of the life of Allah. There is no proof he can resurrect anyone. Did he? We have, a, we have a proof that Jesus did. Even the Quran witnessed for that. And you know, if your enemy witnessed to you, that is against your enemy, not against you. If your enemy witnessed that Jesus resurrected people, if your enemy witnessed that Jesus created from the mother bird, that means he's a creator. So the Quran took the creator name of Jesus and he put it in the Quran. And now the Muslim, they claim that Allah is the creator. So we will see that all those good titles of God been taken and stolen from what Jesus did, literally. Jesus is the healer. Allah, he claimed to be the healer. Jesus, he forgives sin. The Quran says, is the one, Allah is the one who forgave the sin. So any good thing Jesus did, Muhammad, he took it, he attached it to his God. However, still this God is unknown God. Who is Allah? We will find out in two seconds or more. Can I do it in two seconds? I can, but that will kill your prime time. If we go in the Quran, we will find some very funny, weird stuff. You know, when the Muslim they say, uh, we hear a lot of Muslim says that the Jews believe in the same God. The Muslim, by the way, they think they can play the game of like, you know, uh, like divide and conquer. Divide and conquer. So they bring you a rabbi, he is a Jewish, he says, we will receive the same God. But who cares what the rabbi says? We know, I mean, even your stupid Quran says, the rabbi are liars. So here you see the hypocrisy, that when they want, they accept the rabbi saying, we worship the same God. When they want, they claim that all the rabbis are false, as we see here in the Quran. The Jews and the Christians, they took their rabbis, you know, as monks, as, as, as God, and their monks, as gods, beside Allah. So the Quran here is bashing the rabbis. Then the Abdul, he go suddenly to bring a rabbi for you. He says, this, look, this rabbi says we worship Muslims. And uh, he said, actually, uh, the Muslims, only Muslims, not the Christians, worship the same God. Like the guy, his name, to a singer. But as you see, the Quran bash every rabbi, because any rabbi who don't accept Muhammad as a prophet is a false rabbi for Allah. So why the Muslim they bring a rabbi who is a scam, according to their religion, to witness for them? That means you are a scam too. It's like somebody paying a false witness to witness in the court of fallacy. And by the way, this verse here exposed Muhammad. Muhammad is a stupid person. When he said that they took their monk and their rabbis as gods, instead of Allah. Here you notice the word gods and Allah. Allah then is a name. For sure the Muslims agree with that, you know. But here, by the way, in Arabic it says, they took their monks and their rabbis and as, as gods instead of Allah and the Messiah, which means they took their monks and rabbis as God instead of Allah and al Messiah. Which means the stupid Muhammad, he just confirmed that the Messiah is God because you should not take your monk and rabbi as God, replace them 
or replacing Allah and the Messiah. That's what the verse is saying. Then the Muhammadan, they try to fix it. They say, oh, he don't understand the grammar, Arabic grammar. In Arabic grammar, you can delay the name. That's false. You see, there is a conjunction. Well, Masih, wa. The Muslim, they jump, they say, they took their rabbis and their monks and the Messiah instead of Allah. But that's not what the sentence in Arabic is saying. So here Muhammad, I believe, in certain time, he was trying to be hypocrite to the Christian. Remember Muhammad, when he was praying between the Muslim, sorry, the, the, the pagan Arab like him, he bowed down to the three daughters of Allah and he says, those al gharaniq the goddess, their intercession is a must. It's wished for. And then the pagan, they bow down with him. So Muhammad, he is known to be a hypocrite. When he is between the pagan, he pray to the three daughters of Allah. When he is with the Jews, he act like a Jew. When he is with the Christians, he try to be a Christian. When he is with a Sabian, he is like Obama. Obama, he wear the hat of the Jews when he go to Jerusalem. He make fun of the Old Testament when he is speaking to the atheist. He prays Allah in Ramadan when he speaks to Muslims. And he go to the church holding the Bible and crying when he is reading it, when he is in the church with the Christians. He is international. That is Muhammad. He is doing politics. He is not serving God. And the politics is just for him to be the God, the true God of Islam. So here you will see that the Quran making again more pupu confirming that none of the Christians and none of the rabbis agree with Islam and that is in the time of Muhammad Muhammad actually he said if he was able to convert 10 Jews only the Jews would convert he failed even to convert 10 Jews Ten Jews. The Muslims here in the translation they say of their chief. That's false. It doesn't say chief. It says if only ten Jews believed me, all Jews would be definitely believe me. So Muhammad failed even to make ten Jews follow him. Why? Very very, very simple reason. He worshipped a different god. They got him busted many times. As an example, the story of uh, uh, Zulkarnain, which is a stupid story. The Jews, they came to him, they said to him, O Prophet of Allah, uh, can you ask your God Allah uh, about to tell us about Prophet Zulkarnain? Stupid Muhammad, he believed them that he is a prophet. That's it. The Jews says he's a prophet. He must be a prophet. Then he made a chapter, as you know, in the Quran, speaking about uh, Zulkarnain, uh, he found the sunset in murky water. He found where the sun rise. He found where the sun set. He built a dam between us and Gog and Magog. All those stupid story which making millions of Muslims leave Islam. That actually, the only thing I want to say thank you to the Jews at the time of Muhammad, how they tricked him and made him create a chapter in the Quran which is very funny and very horrible. And that is, uh, uh, you know, for us as a great news. To make Muhammadan leave the stupidity of the Quran. However, here you notice that if the Jews and Muhammad they believe in the same God, so why he fail to make ten Jews believe in him? That doesn't make sense. Obviously, those Jews, not like today. I mean, those Jews they are, you know. Uh, we are talking about an old society where the book of God is extremely important. Not like today, you know, people go into club, there's a Christian by name, Jewish by name, people doing whatever they wish, you know, uh, the freedom bring a lot of uh, stuff. So uh, uh, this is a very tough conservative society. And this conservative society, they refuse Allah the God of Muhammad, and they refuse Muhammad. Can we say the same about Jesus? 
Did Jesus convert and he make 10 people believe in him? Jesus, he made thousands and thousands of Jews believe in him. The Bible witness for that. In fact, all his disciples, they are Jews. It's a fact. And then the disciple of the disciples, most of them, they are Jews. And then for sure, when the church is spread, then there are disciples who they are from different ethnic groups and different uh, languages and nationality. But for sure, Jesus never failed to bring thousands and thousands of Jews to believe in him. But now we want to go and check the name of Allah. You see, uh, before I mentioned many times that the name of Allah is containing two words. And, uh, you know, I think most of you, you saw those videos. But before we go there, uh, there is many verses in the Quran proving that the God of Muhammad has nothing to do with the God of the Christians and the God of the Jews. Let me think of some verses. Uh, which verse I will show you first? Let us see. Let us start maybe. Uh, this verse. Actually, this verse is very embarrassing to the Mohammedan. You know, when a Mohammedan, he, you know, he speak and debate a Christian, you will notice that Muhammadan they choose only Christians who do not know much about Islam. Because it's going to be very embarrassing to find refutation, oppose what they claim horribly from their book. So if the Jews believe in Allah, do you see what the Jews are saying about Allah? The Jews making fun of Allah, saying Allah is poor. You know, the word poor, by the way, it's not about being rich with money. Your God is poor. We are rich with our God. We are rich with our God. We are wealthy with our God, Elohim, Adonai, Shaddadi. We are uh, 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 rich with the, uh, our God, Yahweh. So who is your God? Your God is poor. Why they are making fun of Allah, calling him poor? Because simply, you could not provide any evidence to prove that he is rich with power and he can prove that Muhammad is a prophet. Otherwise, why the Jews will say Allah is poor and we are rich? Here the translation maybe is not too much good. This is a, a, a stupid Yusuf Ali. Let us see uh, other translation. Let us see uh, Hilali, Muhammad Hilali and Muhammad Khan. Amar Rabbi Amar. Let us see Muhammad Hilali. Hilali Bali. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, our, our verse. I mean, this. Uh, hold on. Okay. The Jews they say, truly Allah is poor, and we are rich. So how in the world, the Muhammadan they brag, lying, saying that we believe in the same God. When the Quran witnessing that the Jews insulting heavily, heavily Allah, 
There is no way someone believe in Allah. He, the Jews even don't dare to use the word God. Do you know that? Even Yahweh, by the way, it's like a summary because they don't dare to use it. Like the, the don't even say the word. This is how, like, very uh, respectful they are for the word God. Why in the world the Jews will accuse Allah to be poor if they have the same God in their book? You guys, do you understand what I'm saying? Do you think Christian prince will make fun of Allah if he believe in Allah and he pray to Allah? Right? Uh, somebody saying, Yahweh was originally die, a deity worship. That's false. You see that uh, the stupid people, they, they go and they say in internet says that the word Yah is appear in Egypt. The word Yah, you idiot, mean God have nothing to do with what the word Yahweh mean. Yahweh is not even a word. It's a summary of sentence. It's totally mean different meaning, totally different letters, totally different uh, 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 structure. So stupid people, they go, I, I will give you an example. In Arabic, in Arabic, and in English, uh, there's many words are very similar. Uh, let me try to remember one. Uh, I will choose something dirty. Fit with this dirty idiot who says we like uh, this name Yahweh is uh, worship is a deity of a pagan god. The word kiss in English is exactly the same word for vagina in Arabic. Exactly the pronunciation, everything. So now a stupid donkey, he will go from the middle of nowhere, he mix between languages, and he say, okay, those people, they say kiss, that means vagina. But Abdul, this is English, kiss there mean something else, have nothing to do with vagina. So some donkeys do not know the structure and the meaning of the sentence. They say, oh, they are close, they are similar. Well, that because you are a donkey. This is different language. And it's not even the name. It is a summary of what God said to Moses. So we laugh at those people because simply they are the same as the word kiss in Arabic. And they speak from not from their mouth. They speak from their vagina. The vagina is talking. And then the smell is all over. Now we go back to our topic. Excuse my language. I have to be... I'm, you know, I'm straightforward in getting people busted. Never have mercy with liars. Never. You know, like, like there is many people they sugarcoat things, right? But this is not really what God He says to us. Be, they, you are not being rude. You are being truthful. Uh, going back to our topic, as you see, the Jews is making fun of Allah. The Jews not a single Jew is not. In different verse, the Jews is saying, you know, Yadullahi uh, Maglula. Uh, okay. What do you mean, Yadullahi uh, Maglula? What, what do you mean exactly? The hands of Allah are tied up. Why a Jew will make fun of his God if his God is Allah? The Jew says, Allah's hands is tied up. Guys, do you see the word Allah? Did they say God? No, they said Allah hands. So what Allah then? Allah is a person name. Is a personal name for the God of the false prophet Muhammad. Are you with me? 
I hope you are taking reference. So we have tons of evidence from the Bible that the God of Muhammad obviously have nothing to do with the God of the Christians from the time of Muhammad. This is not Christian prince saying this today. And this is all documented. All right. Uh, someone saying the Hebrew language and the letters is similar to Egyptian uh, hieroglyphic uh, Torah came from the Babylonian in Egypt. Uh, my friend, I don't know, some people are really stupid. If you go and check it out, you'll find everything you are saying is absolutely false. Uh, it took, just to show you how stupid people, if it is the same language, why it took them hundreds of years to be able to understand what the Egyptians are writing? I mean, you know, people are the people they have diarrhea. You see how easy to refute the stupidity of those people? Guys, here we go. The Hebrew language and the Egyptian is the same language. It's the same, brother. Yeah, he, he said that. But if this is the case, why they need thousands of years to be able to understand what the what the Egyptian language is saying on the walls or what they need read it as they read Hebrew you know when I say like there is some people they are fool you know I mean they are fool what I can say stupidity is amazing as long as it's the same language, let us read it in Hebrew. That's it. It's similar letters. So either it is similar letter will mean similar words. <laughs> or they are similar, maybe close in, you know, like, uh, in the, the, like in the drawing. But they don't mean the same thing. And then that will debunk all what you are saying. So if I draw in Chinese though, like a house... It, you know, doesn't mean it's a house. It looked like a house for me. But maybe it means a house. Maybe it means something else for that Chinese. So I can, can I copy what the Chinese write and they say, okay, this is look like what we write in a in different country. People are very silly and they are really an embarrassment for themselves. But anyway. Most of people, what they do, they go and copy from the internet, copy, paste. We are talking about totally different language. Words have different meaning. And uh, uh, and at the same time, it's possible that words can travel from country to country and even to the world. As an example, uh, how many languages now they are using the word Amin? Amin, very popular. Muslim, they use it. Christian use it. Jews use it. But this is Aramaic word. I mean, I believe, I agree. So we don't deny languages. They can travel and they can influence other uh, languages. However, at the end of the day is what you meant by your language. So if I say I worship this God, let us say the Muslim, they changed the name of their God. And they called him Elohim. Still, he is not the same. The Sabian, in their book, they call Adonai the God of the Jews. The devil. The Sabian, they are promised in the Quran. Sabian, they speak Aramaic. Promise in the Quran to go to heaven. So how the Quran promised the Sabian to go to heaven, but yet they believe that the God of the Jews is Satan. And why the God of the Jews is Satan according to the Sabian? Because he ordered the Jews to do circumcision. It says in their book, the God of the Jews, Satan, Adonai, command them to chop their penis. Then we find Muhammad adopting what the, what the Jews 
teach about chopping their penis. Here you see how stupid Muhammad is. He is all over the place. With the Sabian, he took them to heaven. But the Sabian, they are the enemy of the Jews. Why? They call the Sabian, they believe that Pharaoh was one of them. And the God of the Jews is the one who killed the Pharaoh and killed the glory of the Pharaoh. Uh, so the Sabi and they are the enemy of the God of the Jews. The Jews are the enemy of God of Muhammad. The Christians, they worship Jesus. And it's obvious in the Quran. So what is left for the Muslim to say that we have the same God? None. Zero. Absolutely zero. The Christians and the Jews, they believe that they are the sons of Allah. Look at this madness. In this verse here, the Jews, they are making fun of Allah. In different verse in the Quran, Muhammad claimed that the Christian and the Jews, they believe that they are the son of Allah. How they are making fun of Allah? And then in different verse, they say we are the sons of Allah and we are beloved by Allah. This is how stupid Muhammad is, because you cannot put those two verses or those verses together in the Quran. Either the Jews, they love Allah, and this is why they think that they are beloved by Allah, to the point they think that they are the children of Allah. Or the Jews and the Christians, they make fun of Allah, they say he is poor, they say he is a cheap, they say he is in disability. It can't be both. Muhammad literally is a stupid man. So what Muhammad he did? He took what the Jews and the Christians believe in, what the Jews and the Christians believe, that they are the children of God. He replaced the word God with the word Allah. But the Jews, as you see, don't believe in Allah, neither the Christians. And here, actually, in this verse, you will see how stupid Muhammad is. He is a stupid to the point he did not understand what they mean. He thought they mean it literally, that they are really children of God. Read carefully. They say we are the children of Allah and his beloved, his loved ones. Say, so now Allah is telling Muhammad will say, say, Okay, then why does he punish you for your sin? <laughs> what, the, what the heck? <laughs> you know, I mean, this is the most stupid argument ever. So imagine you have a son, literally a son, not metaphorically. And then your son did something wrong. And then you punish him. And then the neighbor say to your son, well, if he is your father, why is he punishing you for you to drunk? Huh? So the proof now that he is not your father because he punish you for the wrong you do. Do you see how stupid this man is? This is the proof that they are wrong because simply he thinks they are meant that they are really children of God. So now the Christian and the Jews, not only they have Jesus, Son of God, and the Jews, they have Uzair, it turned to be, no, no, every one of them think he is a son of Allah. Hmm. Uh, somebody saying about Muhammadan. Well, go watch the debate between, uh, what his name? Dr. Brown and the Abdul who mentioned this Muhammadan. Go watch it and laugh. He will die laughing. I do not need to explain what Muhammadan mean. It's funny, it's an embarrassment. So here you see that not only Muhammad, God. I mean, this is God, this is not Muhammad. You see, if Muhammad saying this, I say, okay, Muhammad is a donkey. He is illiterate, as the Muslim they say. 
So he don't understand what the Christian and the Jews believe. So he got it wrong. But this is his God talking. This is the Quran. And he will notice he is saying, he confirmed what I'm saying. He says, you are nothing but a human. <laughs> Do you see it? Guys, do you see the stupidity? How far Muhammad with his donkinism goes? The donkinism of Muhammad is beyond donkeys. So when the Jews and the Christians, they say, we are the children of God, you say to them, nay, you are just a human? Isn't it, this is a clear proof that Muhammad do not understand who is God of the Christians and what they believe and who is the God of the Jews and what they believe. What does this have to do with being a human or a flying butterfly? Every Muhammad is a poopoo -poo machine. You know, like people, they go and take their dog in the street they take like a, you know, like a bag with them so they can collect his poopoo -poo if they are polite people and nice people. But Muhammad is like a dog and he poop all the way. And the Muhammad and they collect his poop and they put it in the book. They call it the Quran. You know what I mean? Let us continue. Are we done? No, we are not. Uh, <clears throat> look what what the Jews they say about Muhammad how Muhammad and his religion are described by the Christians and the Jews and actually this is alone prove that Islam is false and they never have nothing to do with the God of the Christians but just to give you an idea, chapter 2, verse number 78, explain what the word illiterate means. The Muslim here, they add in the translation, between the bracket, Jews, but in the Quran doesn't say any Jews. And there are among them illiterate people who know not the book. So what the word ummi mean? People who do not know the book. Wonderful. So now we get an idea. The Muslim they call their prophet ummi, which mean, according to their translation, he is illiterate. He is illiterate about what? Is he illiterate about writing and reading as they claim? No. He is a pagan. This is what Ummi mean. The Jews, they call anyone who is not from the children of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, Agomai. Agomai mean a pagan. Chapter 3, verse number 20. Called the Muslims Gomai again, pagan. Read carefully with me. So, if they dispute with you between two bracket Muhammad, say, I have surrendered to Allah and I submitted. And those who follow me, and say to those who were given the scriptures between two bracket, read with me, the Jews and the Christians. And those who they are, the illiterate Arab pagan. What? Hold on. What the word Ummi mean? Pagan. But we just showed you that Muhammad himself is Ummi. That means Muhammad is a pagan. Let us go and find the verse for you.
Look how many times it appears in the Quran. Chapter 7, verse 157. Chapter 7, verse 150. Let us see this first one. Look how the false translation says. Those who follow the messenger, the prophet, who is Ummi. Here translation says neither read or write. False translation. I mean, look, look at the hypocrisy of the translator. The same exact word here translated as, as the one who cannot read or write. Hmm? This is the word. Al Ummi. Wonderful. This is the same word. How they translate it? Pagan. <laughs> the illiterate simply is the Gomai, the pagan, the idol worshippers. So how come when the Quran use the same word about Muhammad, the Muslim, they make it illiterate, they don't know how to write, how to read. But when the from verse, chapter 3, verse 20, use exactly the same word, suddenly it's about the pagans. They are illiterate about what? Illiterate, they don't have a book. The one who does not have a book is a gomai. Is it possible that those pagans, none of them knows how to write, how to read? That's false. I mean, those pagan Arabs, supposedly, uh, they used to have a lot of poetry, and they hang the poetry on the wall of the Kaaba. So all the Arabs, they all get it read. Nobody knows how to write, how to read. Why? Is that because of the curry they eat? Like maybe they are like Zurkul name. Somebody hit them in their head and they lost their memory. So here you see the stupidity of the Quran author and the Quran translator. They try to do duct tape and duct tape is not helping. Just little knowledge of the Arabic language, you will see how stupid Islam is. Now, are we done? No. We are not. We can show you tons of verses. If you go to chapter 5, verse number 51, not only this is a verse about hate, but this is an amazing verse about donkeyism. Muhammad literally is a certified donkey from the school of donkeyism. Actually, there's a guy, he's a Muslim, he made a comment, and I promised him to call Muhammad the Khan prophet. He called me Khan. Why? I'm asking you to uh, give me money? What Khan? It's your prophet who promised me endless penis, conning me to believe in him. And the same time he tell me there's gold and silver in heaven, just die for me. What about you die for me? And you know, later we, we talk. If you read this verse with me, you will notice that the Christian and the Jews for sure don't believe in the God of Muhammad. Why? Because take not Jews and Christians as a friends. Okay, if we believe in the same God, why we cannot be friends? The verse says. They are awliya for each other. The word awliya, by the way, include Allah. Who is the wali of the Muslim? They will say Allah. What the wali mean? Helper, protector, etc. So they don't have, they are not awliya who belong to Allah. They are awliya to each other. Because both of them, they have the same God. At the end of the verse, you will see something extremely proven to us that Muhammad is a donkeyism graduated person. Who of you can help me to tell me where in the end of the verse there is something proven to us that Muhammad is a donkeyism graduate? 
Anyone want to help me? I know my voice takes some time to arrive for you, especially if you live next to Joe Biden. Anyone can tell me what is the problem? You know, those who they are asking questions, I mean, we have a topic. And those people, they are asking questions. I mean, what's wrong with you? Did us finish the topic? And then if we say, if you have a question, ask. Jesus, can you explain to me why there is a Jesus? So should I stop what I'm talking about and go to you? So guys, what is the, what is the problem? Who want to help me? Let us see. I just say to you, at the end of the verse, There is a very stupid thing. Prove to us that Allah cannot be the same God of the Christian and the Jews. Not only the name. Anyone notice what the problem? Nobody? Or atheist and do wrong and just? Okay, I mean, but still. Look, look, listen. Allah guide not those who are unjust. Okay. So look, how can you believe the stupidity? So how you are sending Muhammad? What what exactly the mission of Muhammad to guide those who they are just and they are following Allah? Well, they are already following Allah. When he speak here about unjust, those are supposed to be unjust to themselves by following wrong God. So the stupid donkey Muhammad, claiming that his God will not guide people who they are unjust. Question Muslims, so who guide Andrew Tetz? Was Andrew Tetz just a week before he convert? I want to know who guided him then, because the Quran confirmed Allah guide not those who they are unjust. And here we notice that we have a major issue with the donkeyism of Muhammad. What Christ he said, he said, I came for the sick, not for the healthy. And that make a lot of sense because you come, I mean, imagine the doctor, you know, you call the doctor, hello, uh, uh, please send the ambulance. The ambulance come, we, 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 they arrive to your building. They go to every healthy apartment, except the sick one. Why? Because I did not come to the sick one. That's what the Quran is saying. Have you ever heard of donkeyism more than donkeyism of Muhammad, the corn prophet? This is literally donkeyism. And this is totally the opposite of what our God stands for. Our God, he is here to save the one who they are lost. If I copy this in the front of your eyes, Inna Allah la yahdi, I will copy three words and take it to the Donkinism book of Muhammad. And I will paste in the search engine in the front of your eyes. Lord have mercy. Let us read together. You will find chapter 2, verse number 258, saying the same. Allah will, unjust, will not guide the unjust one. So how Allah will guide anyone? Chapter 2, verse number 272. This one is a big donkeyism. Are you sure, Muslims, that Muhammad, police be upon him, he was not graduated from the school of Andrew Tetz online by paying $300? 
read carefully with me it is not for you it's not upon you muhammad to guide them huh? Huh? what it's not to you muhammad it's not your duty to guide so what is a duty Do we have any Muslim in the chat? Any Muslim? Anyone? This verse means Muhammad has no job. And that means that the Quran is a book of contradiction. Isn't it the Quran in the front verse says that Muhammad is a Siraj and Mudian? I lost some, uh, uh, some uh, like stickers on my keyboard. I'm trying to find where it is. It must be full in the floor because now I cannot read the keyboard carefully. You know, I put stickers on the keyboard to be able to read the Arabic. In chapter 33, it says that Muhammad is doing da'wah, invitation to Allah, and he is a siraj and a muniran. He is a lamp. If we ask any Muhammadan, what the lamp does anyone can help me what the lamp what what I, if i say muhammad is a lamp what does that mean lamp he guide you you see the lamp in the darkness you follow the light and you reach the direction, the correct direction. But the other verse says, it's not for you to be a lamp. It's not for you. It's not for you to guide. But Allah guide whom he wills. Here, we have another popo of the donkeyism of Muhammad. Police be upon him. It turned to be Muhammad came, Muhammad gone, Muhammad say Quran, Muhammad recite Quran, Muhammad die, Muhammad sleep. It doesn't make any difference. It's Allah. He guide whom he wills. So what Muhammad do? Why the other verse saying he is a lamp? Is he a lamp who guide people to the truth? Or it's not up to Muhammad? Muhammad here, he explained why he, nobody want to believe in him. So he made this verse, saying Allah told me, well, it's not up to me. I wanted to convert you, but Allah, he, he guide as he will. And the same thing it says, Allah, he mislead who he will. To read with me, this verse, you will see that Muhammad donkeyism 
is beyond atheism, Satanism, Chitinism, all kind of ism. Read carefully. The disbeliever, they said, how come Muhammad, his God, sent not down on him any miracle? It's just a normal question. I mean, the guy, he claimed, big claim, he claimed to be sent by God. And God, he confirmed his messengers. How? By giving them a way to do miracles, so people will notice that those are not like you. So why this is a bad request? Can those people say the same to Moses? No. Can they say the same thing to Jesus? No. Can they say the same at any prophet? No. But they can say it to Muhammad. It's a very normal request. Otherwise, anyone come to us and says, I'm prophet of God. Here, Muhammad is bashing them, and look what he say. Verily Allah, he sent astray. This is the Muslim translation, not my translation. Say, verily Allah, send astray whom he wills, and guide it into himself who turn to himself in repentance. Okay, hold on. So he sent you astray. He is the one who caused people to go astray. And then he guide those who came back to him in repentance. <laughs> But those who repent already, he did not guide them. They repent already. They are guided already. I mean, why somebody want to repent to Allah unless he believe in Allah? You, you know what I mean? Like, when I say I repent to God, that means already, you did not guide me. I repent. The Quran, again, is just a donkeyism book. Let us continue. And here you ask yourself, why Allah even want to guide, must guide those people? Chapter 16, verse number 37, it says, You, Muhammad, covet for their guidance. Then verily Allah guide not those whom he makes go astray. Look at this madness. This is, cannot be our God. This God, he send you astray. And the donkey Muhammad is trying to convert them to Islam. So here we have a contradiction in the missionary plan. Allah have a plan, Muhammad have a different plan. Muhammad, he go to those people, says, convert to Islam. Convert to Islam, you go to heaven, Allah will make your penis endless. Convert to Islam, Allah will give you women, their butt is so big, one mile size. Don't you like one mile size? I don't know, I'm, I'm not convinced with the one mile. I can take a 65-inch screen TV, but one mile size women, I mean, she fart, she will blow the building. So listen, Allah is saying to Muhammad, you are trying your best to convert them, you idiot, but don't you know, Allah guide not those whom he may go astray. What the heck? So he is the one who make them go astray. How that make them victim? I mean, uh, criminals. That means they are victims. Who made them go astray? Allah. So what Muhammad was sent for? It's all about Allah. He decided to make those people astray. Allah decided those people will not go astray. Again, we will see that in our belief, our God, he will never say such a stupid thing. Allah will not misguide people to worship paganism. He will not. Our God, he can, let us say, somebody, a Muslim, he is coming to kill me. I can say, God, he made him do wrong in order not to be able to accomplish his mission. But his purpose is not bad. 
their God, his purpose is bad. He made them misguided not to worship him. This is not about a guy who is going to do something bad, and then God misguided him from his target. Let us say I shot a bullet to kill somebody. God, he made my bullet miss the target, misguided my bullet. No, no, this is not the case. He made them misguided from believing in on him. He is Satan. And he confirmed that the one who he misguided, no helper for them. In the verse before it, you will see another popo of the donkinism of Islam. We send in every nation a messenger. Who is a Muhammadan can tell me the name of the messenger who came to Iran before Islam? Name for me the Muslim messenger who came to Germany before Islam. Name for me the 400 messengers who came. I mean, in India, there's more than 400 languages. But there's more than maybe, I don't know how many thousand ethnic groups. Which means everything ethnic group should have a messenger. Who are they, those messengers who Allah is saying he sent to every nation? Hupu. Same time, as long you are the one who misguide them, why you are sending the messengers to them? Listen carefully. When the Hindus or the Indian, they heard first time about Allah. Hmm. After the Muslim invasion to India. Correct? Okay. But the Quran says, Allah he sent to every nation a messenger. So how come India never heard of such a stupid name, Allah? In fact, I saw a video of a Hindu. Uh, actually, it's about Zak Zakir Naik. He was making a video. He mentioned that Allah mentioned in the Hindu scriptures. But Allah there is a demon, bad demon. He's like, not a demon, it's like an evil spirit. You know, like an evil spirit. This is how stupid Zakir Naik. They are desperate to find the name of their God anyway. So all the Quran proving to us that that cannot be our God. So the name is different. The structure of the name is different. And the meaning of the name is not the same. Actually, the Muslims do not know what is Allah mean. They are copying from other religions. Uh, Read this verse with me, by the way. This is one of the funniest. Musa is talking supposedly, and he said, uh, The knowledge, therefore, with my Lord, in the record, my Lord neither an aware nor he forget. Okay, hold on, Musa. And this is the Muslim Moshe now. If Allah never forget why he have a record, I mean, Abdul can solve the problem. Remember, Allah, don't forget. So why Allah, he write a record? Why Allah, he wrote a tablet of all things he want to do, as long as you don't forget. I write down things to remember. Not really, not me, I don't do that. But let us say, I, like if you give me a phone number, I have to write it, there's no way I will remember it. And why I want to remember it anyway? I mean, there's an easy way, you put it in the phone, that's it. 
But why in the world? This God, who the same verse saying, He is knowledgeable and He will He don't forget. Yet He record what He wanna do. Any Muslim can tell me? For sure not. Let us continue with the Don Donkinism. Uh, chapter 35, verse number 8, it says the same. Allah, I guide who he will and send astray who he will. Ooh, madness. So, what we notice here, that mankind is divided between guided and misguided. The one who is guided is guided by Allah. And the one who is misguided is misguided by Allah. <laughs> Are you with me? So how you can be Satan and God in the same time? How you can be the deceiver and a savior in the same time? Because if there is a third solution, none. He is the one who guide, and he is the one who misguide. So what Satan do for a living? Where is Satan in the game? In fact, the donkey is in Muhammad. He say in Quran this. How many people now are watching? I'm not looking at the numbers. I want to see if the time is good, otherwise I will change it. Oh, not many people, only 758. Bad, bad. Maybe we should not come here in this time anymore. In chapter 6, verse 148 says, The Mushrikeen the polytheists, they say. Well, you know what? If Allah will, we will not worship the wrong God. <laughs> but look, isn't it he who said he is the one he misguided? Look what the stupid Muhammad he said. Muhammad is the same as a, a trucker Carson. You know trucker Carson, this American uh, uh, idiot? This guy, he opposed anything he see. You, you, you show him the snow is white, he says it's black. You, say him the, you, you show him the, uh, the tree is a green, he say it is blue. It's just to be known, you know, like a, a pose. Here, Muhammad, suddenly he take the other side. In all the verses we showed you, and all the Muslims believe that everything happened is by the will of Allah. By the will of Allah. And we showed you tons of verses already that Allah guide, and Allah is the one whom is guide. There's no other options. That's mean it's the will of Allah. Look what happened here. The pagan or the polytheist, they said to Muhammad, those who took partner, the mushrikeen, they say, if Allah willed, we would not have taken partner. Okay. But this is in total agreement with the previous verses we showed you. Muhammad now, he will take opposition. Dr. <laughs> Carson, say to him, Muhammad, say, Muhammad, so Allah now is saying to Muhammad, tell them, tell them. Uh, say to them, okay, what say to them? Huh? What say? Have any, have you any knowledge proof that you can produce before us, which means your claim. What the heck? This one, he need a proof? Isn't it you, Muhammad, keep saying, destiny, 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 and Allah guide who will, and misguide who he will? Now, they agreed with you, and they said, yes, Allah, if he want, he can guide us. That's what they are saying. 
but it's Allah will <laughs> not to be guided obviously <laughs> Muhammad now he jumped to the other side of the table and suddenly he went to refute them but look what happened if we go to the verse in the Quran you will die laughing now you will find Muhammad saying exactly what they just said exactly <laughs> I mean, I, I don't know what to say. I mean, this is the most stupid religion ever. Uh, in chapter 6, verse number 107, read with me and you tell me what kind of a PhD in Dokinism Muhammad he had. One PhD, two PhD, three PhD. He just agreed with what he denied a second ago. Read with me. Had Allah willed, they would have not, they would not have taken beside him a warship. Hold on. But he said totally the opposite, debunking the polytheist in chapter 6 verse 147 they said had Allah willed we don't worship anyone beside him Allah said to them potato potato give me the proof if this is true do you have any proof do you have any proof <laughs> you have like, okay, you made a claim that Allah, if He, if, if this is not the will of Allah, so how come we don't, we are not, uh, we are worshipping beside Allah, huh? Allah, He decided to debunk them. He says, okay, verily, verily, hmm? you say you have any knowledge, proof that you can produce before us the same donkey, Aka Muhammad, Aka Allah. He say exactly what they claim in the other uh, actually it's the same chapter guys it's the same chapter i mean the guy that the ink did not dry yet this is the chapter 6 verse 107 this is the chapter 6 verse 148 can you believe how far the stupidity is So, Elohim is the first word mentioned in the Old Testament. It is not Allah. And anyone, any translation, he used the word Allah, he is giving you a false translation. It doesn't matter what language. And if the Muhammadan, they say to you, it's coming from Aloha in Aramaic, that's false. Because that word have nothing to do with Allah. Oh, before I forget, a smart Muslim and a smart Christian like James White. Somebody asked him, do the Muslim worship the moon God? James White, he said, no. The Quran says don't worship the moon or the sun. Abdul, idiot. The moon God is not worshiping the sun, the moon. It's worshipping the God of the moon. If we go in the Hadith, you will see how Muhammad confess who is his God. And who is the enemy of his God. Muhammad believed that the sun God is his enemy. Based on this story, let us see.
He set watch in the sun, and when it become yellow, between and is between the horns of the devil, he arise and prays four rakat, which means four bowing quickly. Doing what? Mentioning the God. What, what does that mean? Muhammad saying, the one who is a liar, he do pray in certain way when the sun comes. Why he is doing that? Because a Muslim should not pray when the sun up between the two horns of shaitan. To make it more clear, give me a second. You will notice how many times Muhammad is speaking about the two horn of shaitan and the sun. The two horn of shaitan and the sun. Read with me carefully. You can read the whole hadith if you want. Take your time. But here, uh, uh, Muhammad saying, pray as much as you want. Enter you pray, Asr. Then refrain from praying until the sun set, for it set between the two horns of Satan, and it rise rises between the two horns of Satan. Why Muhammad saying that? Is that accurate? Is it accurate that the sun rays from between the two horns of Satan? What will happen if a Muslim he pray when the sun is there? And why only when the sun set and rise, a Muslim is forbidden from praying? And why only the sun is between the two horns of shaitan in that time on the day? When it rise, when it does set. Muhammad is a person who worshiped the moon god. The moon god is the nice god who sent the Arab, the people of the desert, the moon. You see, the, the people who live in the desert, they worship the moon god, not the sun god, because the sun god killed their uh, livestock, grass, water, you know, destroy their water, sun, burning sun. This is the, this is the desert, where degree goes 50, 55, easy. So the sun is something they hate. The moon is the lovely time. At the desert, at the Arab, they sit in their tent. They can see the stars. They spend the night talking, saying poetry. So the moon is their favorite time. The daytime is where things go ugly. Even you die in daytime. Even when they travel, usually, they wait for nighttime because you can have trouble in your, during daytime. It's horrible, hot. Same time, the nighttime can help them to, to be guided so they can follow the stars. But as you see here, Muhammad, he is copying something. Obviously, it is superstition, have nothing to do with God, because none, who is the Muslim here believe that the sun set really as Muhammad said? between the two horns of shaitan. Any Muslim believe that? Is that really why you are forbidden from praying at that time? Hmm? Is that really a good reason not to pray 
you know, and what the prayer, by the way, let us say the sun sitting between the two horns of shaitan. What that have to do with my prayer? Are you saying to me that Allah cannot guarantee the prayer of Muhammadan from the religion of Abdulism to go to him because the reception will be interrupted? All those hadith, do you see them? Some they are da'if, some they are sahih. Hmm? Why my prayer will not be accepted or even received due to the sun position? Is that really a religion of the monotheism? Is that the religion of the Almighty God where my prayer cannot go? Shouldn't I am be able to pray any time to God and God can hear me? Isn't it the Muslim they say Allah is all hearing? He is not. Allah is all knowing? No, He is not. And who is in the world when I believe that shaitan horn? How big is the shaitan? I mean, this is the shaitan who go inside the anus of Adam. This shaitan, he went inside the anus of Adam. Actually, he went from his mouth. And then he came out from his anus. Is the same one. He, his horns is so big to the point the sun coming from between his two horns. If you try to ask Muslims about this, they will say, Allahu A'la, Allah knows best. So, if there is anything between our God and their God. So the name is wrong. I have nothing to do even, you know, when the Muslim actually they say, it's coming from the Aramaic. Thank you very much. I agree. Allah, is an Aramaic word. It's absolutely Aramaic word. Al is a word mean God. La is an Aramaic word, which mean the moon God. In in the previous video, I don't know how many if you watch it, I mentioned uh, uh, the the statement of Yasin. A Muslim, he says to me, Christian Brent, Christian Brent, Christian Brent, you are stupid. It is Yasin, not Sin, Abdul. It's not even a word, it is two letters, as you see. And those letters in your Quran appear as two letters, they present a word. Ya Sin. As you see, this is a Muslim translation. And look what the Muslims, they say about them. Those letters, brother, are one of the miracles of the Quran. None but Allah alone knows their meaning. If we ask like a Nayak, he will say, Brother Fittar, somebody asking me what the word that he mean. I did you. That the word that he nobody knows meaning. Allah only know the meaning of the thing. Zakarnaik, what are you talking about? Allah only know what Yasin mean. What the heck is that? Yasin is a word. Actually, it's two words. Ya is a word meaning God. Go search it. Don't listen to me. Sin is the name of the moon God. And those Abdulism, Donkinism, I mean, why you don't ask Muhammad what this, what okay, Muhammad, what does that mean? You don't know. You don't know. You just copy the names. He copy it. In fact, I believe that this is a chapter not written by him. They have no idea what he's saying. So, yes, what does that mean? It's a miracle, brother. It's a miracle. Okay. So, if I write now a book, it says, Oh, the Christian Prince, what is that? Allah knows best. It's a miracle. <laughs> Okay, what about the F? Uh, it's a miracle. Okay, what about uh, OT? The miracle. Okay, what about SS? 
miracle okay what about if if uh far uh, uh far away okay <laughs> so nobody knows but if you go right now and search in google prophet google police be upon him you will see that sin is the moon god and yeah is a word mean god so sin and you will notice actually if you if you look if you look here let me let me open the picture hold on do you see the do you see the sign of the moon do you see the moon so you will see god and the moon so the god of the moon is the god who is sitting on the throne it's not the moon he is the one who is in charge of the moon and sin is an akkadian Samarian Nana which is the moon god do you see it and sin is the father of the sun god In the previous video, we were talking about if Allah is male or female. Do you remember? <laughs> this is why the Quran keep talking about him as he. And uh, by the way, you know when we say Allah is two words, a l and la. It is a word, two word. The first one mean god al and the second one is la the name all right if there is any way to prove it from the quran that it's used like this yes we have as an example a lot and the uzza al lat al Uzza. Do you see with me what I see? You notice what I notice? Look how it is written. Have you then seen that? See, see that it says consider. It doesn't say consider. It says afarait, which means did you see? Which means the Quran confirm their existence. Because you don't say. Did you see? Not consider. What consider? It says, don't you see? Al lat. Okay. Why they are separating al from lat? Because al is a word meaning God. Lat is the name of the God. Are you with me? El is a word meaning God by itself. Same for the word after it. El Uzzah. What is the name of the God? Uzzah. What is the word God? El. So God Lat, God Uzzah. exactly the same as the word Allah Al Lah Al is a word meaning God Lah is the word which is the name of the God All right, I think we covered the topic and we will continue about differences between our God and their God. But obviously everything we have, they have nothing to do with it. 
Islam is just a collection of many religion. It's a stupid. Can you say Allah? Ya Allah. Okay, you see when you say Ya Allah, this is talking from the Aramaic. Uh, you do not. You should not say Ya. Ya in Arabic now Ya is adatu nida, which means you call somebody. But in fact, the word Ya is a word meaning God. So when you say Ya La. You are saying God la the same when you say Ya seen Ya seen you are calling seen you are calling God seen Manat is different story <coughs> uh, you see because due to their origin each one of them have different uh, let us say origin uh, and then they became the three daughters of Allah however there is some they say that Manat was not really the daughter of Allah, rather she was his vagina, or let's say, uh, 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 the woman he sleep with, not his daughter really. Uh, but the Quran speak about them as daughters of Allah, because as you see here, it says, uh, uh, have you seen Allah and Uzza? The verses confirm that all of them they are females, so there's no question they are male gods or female they are female and the verse by the way says something very stupid it says is it for you the males and for him the females so the god of islam is complaining in a very silly stupid way you see the muslim they say that islam is against the quran says that too that if somebody you tell him you got a daughter his face Turn black. Hmm? Turn black. Always the word face black, it's about like being a bad person. So according to Muhammad. So here you will notice that the one who his face turned black is Allah. What he is upset from? The Arab, they are giving Allah females daughters. Yet they for them prefer to have male. And look what he says. This is indeed is a division most unfair. Can you believe how stupid this is stupid comment is? So if Allah want to say to them, he don't accept that. Why he is talking about what is fair and what is not by giving him females and for them male. And here you notice that the Arab are worshipping females. Which means, Arab before Islam, they are not anti-female. Otherwise, they will not accept a female to be their gods. In fact, the Arab believe even angels are or can be females. You will see here, chapter 4, verse 117, it says, They worship other than Allah, between two brackets, invoke nothing but females' deity beside him. So it's so clear that the Arab, they worship females, and they have no problem with that. And here you notice, that Allah again he is confirming that he is the male God correct we mentioned to you Allah saying how can he have a son without having a girlfriend that confirmed that he is male but here it confirmed even more that the ones they worship is females and he is the male but if you ask any Muslim, is Allah male or a female, he don't dare to answer. But the verse in the front of us, clear. His opposition is, why you are worshipping female gods when you should worship the male god? You see, he did not say fake gods. He said 
female gods is it better now is the image better i hope so anyway i'm giving you the verses you can op you can open from your side chapter 4 verse number 117 same for the angels, same, etc. And by the way, if a Muslim, he said the female gods are not exist. For sure, I believe they are to exist. But however, Muhammad, he claimed that he killed one of the daughters of Allah. Which means Muhammad he agree that they are exist. Let me see if I can find the hadith. Uh, I see here the story, but I don't see the full story, so I'm trying to find it. Let us see. You see, you know, this is the difficulty we have sometimes is to find you. Uh, the English story. <clears throat> Let us see this one here. And you will notice that Al Uzza, according to Muhammad, is a black Ethiopian woman. Let us see. All right, I think we got here. We get to have all the story. Mm. Yeah, for some reason I'm not able to find it, the whole story. But you can search for the expedition uh, of Farid bin Walid to kill Al Uzza. Uh, uh, 
I'm just trying <clears throat> actually this is story confirmed that Muhammad is a fraud because uh, how you deny their existence and then you deny their uh, and you accept their existence you claim you killed her okay I found this website let me post it for you I hope that will be fine even though it's not the website I like to post but eh, this is what it is uh, you will find the story there. All right. So you will find that Muhammad supposedly he sent uh, Khaled bin Walid, and each time Khaled he go and he do something, Muhammad he send him back. He says you are not done yet. He go and then he found the women, who oh, she is Ethiopian black women, and he killed her. And then when he come back, Muhammad says to him, that was Al-Uzza. Uh, were you guys able to open the website? I post to you. It doesn't work? The website didn't work? It work. All right. Uh, there upon that he said, that was al uzza So when Muhammad, when Khaled, he killed her, this woman, Muhammad, he claimed that the woman he killed, that is al uzza so he went, he found the women coming from between the, the bushes or the house or etc. depending in the story. Uh, he cut down those trees. And then a woman, he came from between the trees. And she was black with very long hair and uh, wild. And then Harid, he killed her. As you see here. When he came back and he told him that he killed that woman, Muhammad he said that was Al Uzza. And Muhammad he claimed now that after this Uzza there is no more Uzza, that's it. Which means she will never have babies or somebody will take her place. Here you notice the story is really weird and stupid. Either Al Uzza is a fiction name for a fiction pagan god or she is a truly exist and she is the daughter of Allah remember al uzza is worshipped for centuries so how this is can be al uzza that woman she is alive for a thousand of years the same woman was alive for a thousand of years if she is is she is divine and she can live for Thousands of years. All of those things can lead us for one thing, that Islam is really stupid. Anyway, I think we have enough for today. Uh, I hope we, we were able to help you with some information. And next time, uh, you know, I will see if I change the timing because I notice that not many of you are coming, you know. You see, we change the time just to serve the purpose of bringing more people. But then the opposite happened. I'm not sure why, you know. I'm not sure why. Uh, but anyway, I do my best. Uh, the Lord is my witness. I don't hesitate to serve the purpose and to do what I can do. People come, people don't come. Ah. People like to watch, um, I'm not sure, I'm not sure really what make people like things, don't like things. But I mean, if they don't even like Jesus, why they will like me? You know, that will not, that will not be the case for sure. I cannot compare myself 
this you know this earth is full of foolish people and you know they have better things to watch cartoon women dancing short skirt naked women in the beach those are interesting to watch you know but uh, here sharing knowledge teaching educating people for free eh, it's just a waste of time who want to see that you know who care they don't care many don't care a time will come and those who don't know God God will not recognize them time will come and people who spend their life party drinking sleeping around they will struggle There's one eternal all they will struggle with their you know the time they wasted all their life is wasted and you know you cannot bring time back nobody can bring time back so we have to end this now i have this abdul in the screen by mistake sorry uh, this this abdul from yesterday so he is an example of stupidity and donkinism and this is what happened to you by the way if you are a foolish person and you fail into the hand of the foolish Muhammadans they will be able to fool you because it is the easiest I mean the foolish person the ignorant person is the easiest to fool very easy to fool an ignorant person but it's impossible to fool someone he knew if you knew what Islam is you will never convert to Islam if you knew what Muhammad is you will never trust him if you knew and who is holding you from knowing nobody except yourself you refuse to know you refuse to accept you refuse to learn and then the penalty is going to follow you believing in Islam is nothing but a huge sin And the wage of sin is there. I want to say thank you for being here. May the Lord bless you. I will see you soon again. This is your brother Christian Prince for serving you humbly for today. Thank you. Good evening, Dr. Zakarnaik.